there was always talk that Building 7, which apparently wasn't hit by almost that, with, with nothing, basically, was pulled. We're, what are we talking about there? Same thing happened? Yep, same thing. And, and did you know it wasn't uh, three buildings that were destroyed that day? It wasn't four buildings that were destroyed that day. It wasn't five buildings. It wasn't six buildings. It was seven buildings that were destroyed that day. Uh, building four is, is one that I've become fascinated with at times, where the entire main body of the building went missing. Gone. You know, gone with the wind into powder. I'm not saying, you know, disappeared or vaporized. Uh, I'm saying it, it just it's not there. You got a lot of powder around. You know, there's some scraps and stuff. But it, it is also images right below the ground of where that was. It was punched down a little bit into the first layer below ground, but the, in the parking garage, a few sto- stories below that, you can't even tell anything happened. The lights are still on. There's maybe dustier than usual. Um, but where did the building go? Building four. That was a, you know, kind of a large, it was a, a nine-story building, but width-wise it was, you know, bigger footprint. <clears throat> but it's gone. Building three, gone except for a little shoebox at one end. Building six, you know, <laughs> someone today wrote me and said, it was saying it was like a jack-o'-lantern all carved out in the middle. Um, building five had these cylindrical holes in it. Uh, there's, you know, Building 7, it had all this stuff pouring out of it all afternoon for about seven hours. A lot of material. And then when it went away, it made a 0.6 on the Richter scale. That's like a jackhammer. Well, it sure is. How much energy, Judy, do you think was needed to destroy these buildings? Uh, it could even be negative energy. If, if you can understand the mechanism, that's what the beauty of this is, if there's a silver lining in this. It's that this technology was used for, for destructive purposes, but it doesn't have to be. It could be used for good purposes, for providing free energy to the world. Uh, if you have the ability to, to uh, uh, affect you know, the nature of matter, instead of having uh, atoms attract each other, they're repelling each other. So if you just give it that instruction, it isn't like you have to put in a whole lot of bombs and a lot of energy that way. It could be the energy comes from the material. And actually, the dust cloud that rolled down the street, first responders that I talked to said it was cooler than ambient temperature. Not only was it not hot, it was cooler. And then it started feeling uh, warm because, you know, when you put acid on your hands, it feels like it's burning up, but it could be room temperature. It, there was something in the dust that was eating on their skin. And they just couldn't, like, they were scrubbing off in the shower afterwards, just couldn't get it out. It was uh, interesting. So but, what would happen, Judy, I don't want to get morbid here, but if a, a human being is in that building and gets hit with this directed energy, what happens to the human? Is I, is the human pulverized yeah. too? Uh, I want to like get away from the idea of you know a point-and-shoot laser beam. It's more of a field effect, like the like the coverage range of your cell phone. You know, it's a it's a uh, a zone of effect. Um, but remember the uh, people who left the building early. They've been referred to as jumpers. I don't think they voluntarily jumped, uh, but they they somehow found themselves, you know, getting away from something and they ended up out out the window. Uh, and weird other things are happening in the building. <clears throat> Like one woman called her husband and said, "Oh, we're going to start down the stairs, and uh, you got you know wet T-shirt wrapped around the head, and we'll be, we'll call you on cell phone when we get to the bottom." And two or three stories later, she went out the window. Do you ever get Doctor Wood into the who? Uh, no, but I got as about as close as uh, I got closer than anybody has in the public domain. That is, uh, I pretty much uh, know who knows. And that's who I tried to take to court. And tell me about that. Um, these were contractors on the NIST report, National Institute of Standards and Technology. Right. And they were mandated by Congress to determine why and how the towers collapsed. Okay. They didn't do that. And I wrote a, a request for correction to NIST saying, you know, the, the contractors were, were leading them astray and, and um you know, we can't sue a government agency, but we can sue contractors for fraud for a, a government agency. 
And uh, there's a couple of the contractors, and one in particular, that uh, had the most number of, of people on the contract, on the NIST report. They are developers and manufacturers of energy weapons. Aha! Uh -huh. Not only that, they also had, and still have, I believe, contract with the U.S. government to know everything about any weapon of mass destruction that exists or is being developed anywhere. So not only do they know what technology it is, but they know whose technology it is. Wouldn't it have been nice to have them under oath? What happened to the suit? Uh, see, the lower court uh, judge dismissed it saying uh, he wasn't going to hear a case about who shot JFK or what went on the moon. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, did you read the this isn't about that. Did you get confused? As to which? <laughs> yeah, not that okay, case. So, <laughs> so we appeal it, and um, and those there's three judges in the court of appeals. They were very respectful, but see, while working on the case, I couldn't talk about it, and I couldn't advertise it, and there was a kind of um, a clamp down on uh, anybody else talking about it, not legally, but you know those who uh, didn't want this case to go forward were keeping everybody else from knowing about it. But there was only like five of us or six of us, you know, count them on one hand, who supported this case. Now, if you were those judges, what would you do? And what those judges did, and they're very respectful of me in doing this, they wrote in the written decision, they acknowledged the law applied to this case, but they're ignoring the law and dismissed the case. Absolutely yeah. riveting, Judy. I've, I've got to tell you, uh, as 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 so many people have all their different theories, this one is very frightening. It's not a theory. It's not a theory. It's, I, know, I know what I know that I, I know. I know. I know the way you feel about that. But uh, a lot of people believe that. They they a lot of people do call it a theory, don't they? Uh, because that's what they're used to doing. Is just you know what someone says. Oh, that's a theory. That's a theory. And is two plus three, uh, you know, equal to five? Is that a theory? Shouldn't be. Um, if I want to know your height, I would start with a tape measure, not a theory. What I'm reporting here is basically that is evidence, evidence that anyone can observe if they look in my book. I don't okay. tell people what to think. Let me ask you this. Uh, and we're coming up to the break, so I may okay. have to ask you next hour. But why do you not accept the theory <laughs> or conclusion of okay. Gage, of Gage is, in the of Gage he in the He doesn't evidence. He presents theories. It is a theory. Okay, and but d could you could you? Uh, you know, I asked him. I asked. I says, how in the heck could you put explosives in these buildings and exactly. nobody see it? Yeah, you go into work one morning and the ball's missing because somebody's putting something in there and somebody doesn't notice. But not only that is how do you detonate it? Uh, is one of the parts of my book. I showed, just to remind people, I showed pictures of these signs you see at the side of the road saying, uh, blasting zone ahead, turn off cell phones and two-way radios. Okay, how do you do that for Manhattan for six months? Yeah, you can't. Judy, stay with us. We're going to come back in a moment. Dr. Judy Wood, conclusions about where did the towers go, and we'll take your phone calls this hour as well on Coast to Coast AM. <laughs> 